uh, so first of all, introduce myself. I'm Nikki Kaiser. I'm a chemistry teacher, first and foremost, but I am um, currently seconded to the Education Endowment Foundation, the EEF, as their science content specialist. And so I'm talking with two hats today because this is very much grounded for, for ideas that, um, from the classroom. Um, but I was asked to um, develop uh, something, and, and this is talking about the radar framework. Apologies for the spelling, but you'll see why that is hopefully in a minute. But I do think that hopefully, although this is um, with a science teacher head on. I think a lot of people have said to me that this kind of way of thinking is, is, is relevant to other subjects as well. So hopefully it'll be of interest. Um, and it starts from this picture here because um, I think we have to recognise that we all come into the world and then we develop all sorts of um, different ideas and misconceptions about the world around us. For example, a lot of people think that um, the air is empty and actually can make things lighter so children often believe that if you blow up a balloon it's lighter than, than before you blew air into it and and that's you know that's fine and as we develop more kind of scientific understanding we, we learn that these um you know other ideas but the problem is if we don't address these, if we don't look at this, if we believe that the world and the air is this empty, weightless space, then it can be quite difficult to understand other things. At the moment, for example, very difficult to get on, uh, understand the idea that um, the COVID coronavirus is, is carried by aerosols and so the importance of, of ventilating rooms and, and wearing masks. Um, but also, you know, there are other um, other ideas that, that would build on that as well, because when we think about the way we learn, we build, we make connections. I think remembering is one thing and, and I think helping people to remember things is relatively straightforward but getting people to make meaning make connections understand and build on their understanding that's harder and that's where misconceptions i think come in because if you're building on misunderstanding if you're building on ideas that are incorrect then it's very difficult to build understanding from that and there's all sorts of sources of um, misconceptions. So this is a, an infographic that um, I've just produced for the EF around where these kind of things come from. And sometimes it will be just a misunderstanding or an incomplete understanding. So there will be, for example, people that know about atoms and think that all the atoms in wood must be hard and brown. Or there might be language that we use in lessons, respiration and breathing and oh, just run out of energy and all these kind of things that we say without thinking they can also lead to misconceptions and misunderstandings if we're not careful and sometimes we even reinforce these misconceptions ourselves um, if you look at your veins they're blue they appear to be blue and so you might think that the blood inside your veins is blue and then if you look inside a science textbook you see diagrams of the heart with blue deoxygenated blood so it's not to say any of these things are wrong or any of these things just need to be kind of zapped or in fact what we know is that we have to find out what it is that our people think and build on that understanding that that's what teaching is and so this is what this framework, the radar framework is. And, and the reason it's radar is because um, what I'm trying to get help um, teachers to do is before they even get to a lesson, before they even teach a topic, research and anticipate the kind of misconceptions um, children might have. You might think about um, common stumbling blocks and, and vocabulary and so on. Then there's a diagnose and address bit. So that's the bread and butter of teaching. You know, how do we uncover what our students think? how do we find out what they think and how can we help them to build on that but for me actually a really important aspect of this is the address assess and review bit because these ideas you know we have so much going on in our lives and we have to remember to revisit and check understanding afterwards and just and also when we go to teach something else to consider what what children have done before primary school they will have done lots of science before they even meet us at secondary school so or, or if you're a primary school you know and so on before they get to their lessons so I was just going to share a couple of ways that people have used this. This is Tandy, who is a, um, a science teacher in London, and she's been using this with um, a PGCE student to help them 
think through the ideas in their planning before they even get to the lesson. So that's one way. I'd really like you to look out tomorrow for some videos that we're um, sharing. Um, this is Emma Taylor, who's another teacher in London, um, and she's talking about some of the ways that she uncovers misconceptions, concept cartoons with GCSE students and so on. She's a really, it's, it's really worth it. If you can catch those videos, have a, have a listen to her. And also, this is Helen yeah, Slipper, who's a teacher. I'm finishing now, I promise. And I just wanted to say, um, if you want to find the first thing, if this isn't another checklist to check up on people in lessons, do just use it to focus ideas. And if you want to find any of these links, then um, there's a bit.ly link there. And I think also that Katie is sharing a link with you as well. Sorry to, I went all minute over, didn't I? <laughs>